Hello, sorry for the long wait between uploads, but I've been kind of busy moving to a new state. That's besides the point. Uh, you see here I'm holding my ever so handy dandy and trusty BZ58 rifle. The video that I'm making today is not about this, it's only tangentially related to the rifle. What I'm going to be making the video of is all of this lovely equipment that is currently buckled and strapped to my body. Now, if you've been shopping for military surplus equipment for the past two, three years, maybe four, you may have stumbled across these chest rigs at a couple different places. And they're usually very kind inexpensive, around 50 bucks or so. Uh, but you don't just see, you don't really know what it is or how it's supposed to be used. It has a bunch of different pockets on it that are quite specialized. So I'm going to inform you what uh, this whole system is supposed to be not just the chest rig, but all of, or most of, the ancillary accessories in the rest of the system that I've been able to acquire at least. So, first thing that you're probably going to know is the name of it. This is the MNS 2000 system, or uh, in Czech, I'm not going to try and pronounce it, but it is the uh, modular uh, load bearing system, rough translation thereof, and is developed as the name would imply in the late 1990s or early 2000s, adopted in the early 2000s. Uh, to replace uh, the previous generation of Czech uh, load-bearing equipment, which is this system. So this is actually an updated version of what the Czech Army originally had back in the 50s. In fact, I have a rucksack that would have originally gone with this canvas rucksack that was made in 1958. Uh, this is a somewhat updated system where they replaced a lot of the leather and canvas pieces with nylon. Originally, these suspenders would have been uh, all leather. Uh, later, they were made to leather and cotton, and then eventually all to nylon. These pouches would have been leather or a version of faux leather. Uh, but the bayonet scabbards stayed leather. Uh, they did make uh, some CBRN, uh, some hazmat versions of the scabbard. Uh, that was because the leather would soak up any kind of uh, biological or chemical contaminants and be a lot difficult to clean, so they were actually uh, rubberized. In fact, I have a couple of those. Uh, they had magazine pouches, as I said, a canteen on the back, and then you could augment this with a rucksack that would be attached to the suspenders. Um, there were also various leg bags, bread bags, that kind of thing that evolved over the course of the uh, Czechoslovak communist regime. Uh, but eventually, uh, I should also mention, this is actually the same equipment that would have been used by the Czechoslovak forces, not Czech at the time, uh, involvement in Operation Desert Storm. That was, in fact, the only military operation that the non-communist Czechoslovak government was involved in before they split up also in 1991, just later in the year. But there were not just a few, but there were many problems with this system. Uh, the original concept of having leather belt and buckle and then everything threaded onto it with the suspenders dates back to World War II German equipment, and in fact further that, uh, back to World War I and even uh, the Franco-Prussian War style of this uh, system. And so it was very dated by this point. Uh, there were a lot of very obvious ergonomic problems with it. Uh, the most obvious thing is that, well, it's leather. You have to have cows to make it. It's not going to be as cheap as something like nylon, as they discovered in eventually went to, but the belts stayed leather. Uh, though the single biggest downfall, I think, of this system is that while it is somewhat modular, you can take things on and off and thread them onto the belt. You have to thread them onto the belt, and if well, this isn't the most odd, this isn't the worst thing, but having, putting them on in the right order is key because if they're not in the right order, then you have to take everything off, and it's really only possible to thread things on from one end because of this buckle here makes it too thick. Otherwise, you have to thread it on from the loose tail. But the worst thing about the system is that nothing stays in place. There is nothing except the friction of the components on the leather belt to actually hold them in place, and they just don't. Um, if you start running around, uh, the leather tabs on the back will start sliding around, canteens, bags, pouches will start sliding around, and as you can see, this one actually just came off while I was moving. I'm not, I'm not gonna bother. But so you can see, this wasn't a very secure system. Uh, the equipment pouches themselves were fine, um, but there was it was not a very uh, ideally suited system. And so coming into the 1990s, the Czech government 
wanted a solution to this problem. They want something that was still modular and still lightweight, uh, but wanted to give their soldiers the capabilities to augment it as they saw fit, and more importantly, have it be secure so that it's not constantly moving around on the person, that it always stays in the same place, either on their chest, back, or on their belt. And so that brings us to the modern MNS 2000, which is this. So as you can see, this seems to have solved a lot of the issues with the leather and nylon or canvas belt system. Um, but this is very much of its era. You can see this isn't what we consider modern tactical equipment. This is very much of its era. This is, we're talking late 90s, early 2000s here. Uh, at the time, what was very popular was the concept of the tactical vest where you, you don't have the modularity that we commonly associate today with you know, plate carriers with tons of molly webbing everywhere that you attach and detach pouches as you see fit. Uh, this is very much, you buy this from a manufacturer and it has everything that they think that you need all ready to go and in established places that they think are the most convenient. Now, in some ways, uh, this is good. It means that it's very durable and very standardized. Um, but at the same time, you don't have the modularity, the absolute modularity that we expect now, um, where most people are just using a plate carrier or chest rig and then augmenting that with pieces of equipment on their belt. And so with that in mind, I will show you all the details of this uh, MNS 2000 system and how you would go about setting up and what the different options you, ha you have for setting up the equipment, because there is also a different way of using the system that does not include this vest. So I'm gonna get down to the floor and show you all of the details of the MNS 2000 system. Okay, so as you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff to go in the MNS 2000 system. And actually, before I get into anything else, I wanna mention the camouflage pattern that they use. Uh, the name of the pattern is called uh, VZ95, or sometimes called M95 or Type 95 camouflage pattern. And it's not really anything special. Uh, basically what the Czech Republic did, the Czech Army did, was they took the US, uh, US Woodland pattern, sometimes called Ertl or M81, but the official name is US Woodland, and changed the colors a bit to fit uh, the Czech environment. So they got rid of the lighter browns in the pattern, and it's basically just greens, blacks, and a dark brown. So the whole pattern looks a lot darker than regular US Woodland would. Now, with that out of the way, there is also a desert pattern version that is the same pattern, but they reduced it to a two-color pattern, but it's still the same uh, patterns that they would use in the woodland pattern, just reduced to two colors. So a lot of them are blended together, and you may ask, why did the Czechs come up with this? There's no deserts in Czechia. Uh, the reason is because in 2002 or 2001, uh, the United States invoked Article 5 of NATO, the Czech Republic being a part of NATO at that time, they joined in 1999, they set out to invade uh, ta then Taliban-controlled Afghanistan as part of the NATO coalition. They were not involved in uh, Iraq, to my knowledge, very much. That wasn't a NATO operation, but they were heavily involved in Afghanistan. So that's why the desert color was adopted. And there are actually some differences in this rig that I will get to after I've gone over the first one. But... I'm getting ahead of myself. So we'll get all this stuff out of the way for now and I will show you how I have this vest set up and we'll start from top and go down to the bottom. So very first thing, this is a backpack that you would have used with the system. Now it does have arm struts on it, but the way it's meant to be used is actually buckled onto the back of the vest. If you have one of these vests, you may have noticed these buckles here and wondered what they might be for because there's nothing on the vest that immediately tells you what they're for. They are actually for this backpack. Now, it does have shoulder straps so you can use it on its own, but it is intended to be strapped to the backpack. Now, I have tried loading this up with heavy stuff like ammunition used for a match. That is not very comfortable. It doesn't hold the weight particularly well. So this is more for your lighter goods, you know, change of clothes, rations, that kind of thing. Uh, you may have been able to hold a bit of ammunition, but definitely not several hundred rounds as I was trying to do. Uh, these side pouches are actually attachable. You can unzip them and 
carry them as their own. And in fact, they have MNS2000 attachment points on them, so you can just carry them on the belt. They're rather large. I wouldn't really recommend doing that unless you had to. They really should stay on the belt. And they attach down at the bottom as well. Flipping it back to the front, I also mentioned the size adjustments. These vests, if you get one, are very, very large. And the reason for that is because at the time you had these tactical vests, but they didn't have any provisions to have body armor because you're meant to wear them over top of a good old fashioned flak vest that would have armor panels, Kevlar panels in there. And this is what you would be reliant upon to stop shrapnel or uh, small arms fire. And they, in keeping with the old school tradition, they actually have a neck guard. This would have also had Kevlar panels in it, um, but a lot of them would have been on the front, back, sides. And that's where the most uh, crucial panels would have been. So this has very generous adjustments so that you can wear this on top of it. And I have done so. Uh, I'll spice in some pictures of when I shot a match with the flak jacket with this over top of it. You can still move. You're quite stiff and your length of pull uh, becomes quite long. But if you're using something like EVZ58 or something with an adjustable stock, you can adjust it down so that it's still comfortable for you to use. Now, going down, we have a bit of Velcro and some Molly-like patches here so that you can attach either a Velcro patch or something else that you need to augment it with. You have a general purpose pouch here with a zipper so you can keep some stuff on it. I have a lens cloth in there from the last time I was wearing this. Now, going over to what would be the left side of the vest, you have this pocket here. You may think that this is for a bayonet, but it's not. This is for the Uton fighting knife, which has a fairly typical blade. Uh, this one is stainless. You can also get them where they are uh, black DLC coated as well. Uh, the knife itself is called uh, the Uton and is made by Mikov in the Czech Republic, because of course. And the knife also comes with accessories such as a saw blade or an awl that you would put in the hilt and then put a uh, brass tip through on the lanyard to attach it and use the tool outside of the knife. And the MNS2000 system has a dedicated pocket for this knife. Keep that there nice and protected. And then when you go into combat and you can use it, pull it out and draw it. How much use you would get out of that, I don't think very much. Now, a very distinctive part of the MNS2000 system is these magazine pouches. And these are specifically made for use with VZ58 magazines, because of course this was the Czech army at the time, they were still using the VZ-50 assault rifle, and they would keep using this for another decade after the adoption of this system before replacing it with the 805. But at the time, this is what they were designing stuff around. Now this version has uh, the very distinctive slant pockets, the idea being that you could uh, still get low into cover, it wouldn't obstruct you bending your legs or bending over. Um, but it's still somewhat awkward to draw from, and these only hold two pouches on the front. You would need to have more magazine pouches uh, on the belt, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, later on, there was the second version of this vest. This is the desert pattern, but they came in Woodland as well, where the, pouches, the magazine pouches became vertical, and they hold two magazines. Now, these are still made for VZ-58 magazines can still, still get them in there. Um, however, now there's two of them. You can use these magazine pouches with regular Era 15 uh, magazines, mag, uh, P-mags, Stanags, whatever. Um, however, they are very deep and you will uh, struggle to get them out if you don't have something like a mag pole attached to them. Just an FYI, if you were looking to do that. Oh, another thing, I almost forgot. There is a little admin pouch on the front here. Uh, the whole thing, the whole way the vest goes on is it has a zipper and these two Velcro cords, or patches rather, straps that go into these buckles. So it stays nice and securely on, but still easy to take off. You can put any kinds of things in here. I have a little cheap flashlight uh, for when I need it. On the sides, I have a couple things. First, you have two pouches. Now this is symmetric. They're the same on both sides. Uh, you have these, which are made, uh, meant for first aid accessories. I have some shears tourniquet in here on the left side. On the right side, I've got 
a compression bandage in case you need it. And then there are also two grenade pouches that are built into it. And in this one, I don't have grenades. I just have uh, some, some wrap. And in this one, I believe I have gauze, just extra medical supplies. These look like pouches that you could use for something. They're actually not. What these are is you may have noticed these very thick straps on the front. There's also these metal buckles that are hanging on the underside. What this is, is this is a groin strap. You would wrap this down under your legs, under your groin, run it through here, and you can then use the MNS 2000 system as a climbing harness. Not that I would necessarily recommend doing that, but it is an intended use of, of the system. If anyone's going to try and do this, I'm not liable for anything that happens to you if you set it up wrong or if anything breaks. But you would use carabiner to attach yourself here and this is where you would suspend yourself from should you choose to do so. I have seen people uh, suspend themselves using this. It does seem to work quite well. As you can see the straps and there's a lot of contact with the body so it's very broad it distributes uh, the pressure of it very evenly so I think you could get away with it. Again, I'm not responsible if anything goes wrong and you do. Now, going further down, flip over so you can see the whole thing, we get to a part of the system that a lot of people overlook because, again, when you see these vests for sale, you typically just see the vests and nothing else. But what is critically important to the rest of the system is this belt on the bottom. And now this is, give me, I need to get a separate piece. This belt, and it has, this is the real heart of the MNS 2000 system. It has these pockets inside. I don't know if you can see them there. And what those are for is that solves the problem of a leather belt stuff sliding around. So this is, for example, a canteen pouch, but you have these plastic tabs that go into those pockets and then Velcro straps that secure the whole thing in place. So now there's absolutely zero chance of the thing sliding around and moving from side to side. And it's the same system that attaches the vest to the belt. So now you set this up, fix it in place, and then you can take the whole thing off at will. You just unbuckle this, unzip the front, and you can drop the whole thing in one go. That is very convenient. Um, however, one downside of the system that I found is that if you're trying to put anything else that you need to get to immediately on the belt, the pockets that are on the front tend to get in the way. Um, you need to hold this up kind of high because it the, the longer settings really put it down around your legs and you can't really move effectively. So the solution to that is these drop leg panels. And this is something that you wouldn't really see um, in check service. I have two of them on from both my left and right legs. And that's because I was using these as sort of a drop leg adapter for a holster. And then I had to have another one for the magazine, pistol magazine pouches, because otherwise, like I said, I couldn't really get to them. I tried, it was really awkward. Um, you may have noticed also that all, most of these panels, they have what's called a Spanish fly. That's very common. You might have seen it on some other German gear as well. Um, but these are mostly intended for use with pistol holsters. Guys who are issued pistols typically wouldn't carry more ammunition. They just have these. There are a couple different holsters I have come across for this system. If I can explain where to put them. Oh, I put them over here. So, at the time that this system was adopted, the Czech Army was still using the CZ-82 pistol, which is a little blowback pistol, a 9mm Makarov. And so, oops, I should keep it here. They have this holster for it that has MNS 2000 attachment points. And so the pistol goes into the holster like that, has a strap that can come down around it, and that's how you would carry the pistol. Now, what I find kind of funny is they also had a VZ61 holster for doing the same thing. Get your VZ61, which mine is not FDR yet, but don't worry, I'm working on it. Put it in, and bam, now you've got a scorpion. And there are also dedicated magazine pouches for VZ61 magazines. 
just the 20 rounders, not the 10s. Unlike the original leather holster for these, you can fit this gun in the holster with a 20 round magazine. So the 10s become obsolete by that point. Uh, now you can also put standard uh, Molly compatible holsters on these, stuff like the UM84 or copies and derivatives thereof onto this. I've done that before. Uh, so I can use my UM84 and have a CV75 on there. That's totally doable. Some other things, of course, you would need to have a bayonet to go with your rifle. So there are these bayonet scabbards for the VZ-58 bayonet. Again, they have the plastic tabs to attach to the belt loop there. These are available in the desert pattern as well. And the reason for this, you'll see in a minute, is these are extra magazine pouches for VZ-58 magazines. These hold an extra two, have more pouches there, and entrenching tool pouch. This, oh, I should also mention, a extra grenade pouch if you want another fragmentation grenade. This is, looks like a general purpose pouch, but it has these loops for holding extra shotgun shells, should you be using a shotgun for whatever reason. So there are a couple other uh, MNS2000 uh, products that I don't have with me. Um, one of them is a magazine pouch for SVD magazines, the standard sniper rifle uh, of, the Czechoslo of the Czechoslovak and later Czech Army at one point was the SVD, the Dragunov. Um, I don't have one of those. Uh, there is also a 100 round machine gun belt pouch for uh, UK-59 belts for the 762x54R cartridge. Uh, there is also a map pouch uh, that has some uh, translucent sleeves that you put maps in and carry maps for if you were an NCO or an officer uh, and you're trying to lead your men around, that kind of thing. So that's all of the woodland stuff out of the way. I will briefly cover the desert variety. Now this is pretty much all the same stuff that you've seen before. Knife pouch, backpack is essentially the same. Uh, the canteen pouch, as I also mentioned, the canteen pouch is still quite generous. You can fit a bunch of different canteens in here. They're meant for U.S. style uh, one-quart magazines. Or, you know, sorry, not magazines, canteens. Um, this is a Finnish uh, one liter. Did I say one quart? It must be it's more than that. Um, this is a one liter canteen. Also works in there very nicely. However, there's another way to use the system that is not involved with this, and I teeth it for, and that is this yoke system and this is much more lightweight uh, so if you didn't want to put on the whole vest it is quite chunky hard to move in then this is also an option you can just use the belt and these yoke suspenders uh, they do still have these buckles on the back so you can attach the backpack should you so choose this is uh, not an MS-2000 holster, this is uh, a Molly holster, that's for the CU-75, but you still have pouches for it. Still have the VZ-58 magazine pouches. So you can put a canteen pouch in the back. This is the uh, VZ-95 uh, VZ-58 scabbard that fits the same bayonet. Now this does not fit an Uton, it is too small. It also does not fit the modern, uh, sorry, Bond bayonet that was later developed for the VZ-58 that has its own scabbard that's much larger because the blade itself is significantly uh, wider and thicker. But this is the other system that seems to have gotten a lot more use uh, later on in its service life just because it's a lot more convenient uh, to wear and to set up. Uh, you're not carrying around as much extra useless junk that you may not even be using. So basically everything hangs off of the belt and the leg straps and that allows you to be a lot more mobile and move around just that little bit easier. So that is all of the information for the MNS2000 system that I have. Now this is still around in Czech service. You may see, still see some pictures of it. It's not <coughs> used frontline anymore. Uh, they've moved on to various types of plate carriers uh, and other chest rigs, mostly from Phoenix. Uh, I should also mention that all of this as MNS2000 equipment was developed by SPM Liberec in the Czech Republic. So you see their labels on the various pieces of it. Uh, SPM Libric does still make stuff for the Czech Republic, um, but they are doing it side by side now with uh, Phoenix Protector. Uh, and they've moved on to more standard chest rigs 
um, and belt setups, uh, which I'm going to try and use uh, more just to see how it is. I've dabbled around with it a bit and the Phoenix Protector equipment does seem to be quite good. Um, it is a notable improvement from this just in terms of the ease of setting it up and the amount of options that you have. Uh, you're not limited to a proprietary mounting system. I mentioned before, you can still fit uh, Molly stuff to this, like this holster is, um, but it's not ideal. You don't have webbing all over the place that allows you to do it. Um, but that said, this system is still very capable. It's a little awkward to move in, not too terrible. Um, I have done it a couple times and I will likely do so in the future because like I said, it's quite easy to put on, take off, and it gives you capability to have everything you need on your person. So I know I've been saying I make this video for a long time. I finally did. And things have settled down a bit now and you'll hopefully see a lot more of this equipment and this rifle and this rifle in the coming months and the coming videos. So thank you for watching. Uh, look forward to more videos on not just Czech, but other things as well. And hope to see you guys again in the near future. <laughs>